The story begins. Watch out for my cane. Wow. It's rough living the life of a cane. <sighs> After Garden Tractor hits the Mr. Leaf cane and flings cane into the air only to land hard on the ground, scene changes to a deep green backdrop. Big bold white text appears and reads, Sightless Living, copyright symbol, 2021-2024, Sightless Living, all rights reserved, then disappears. Scene changes to a country residential backdrop. Weeks later, it's trash collection day. A garbage truck is seen making its rounds as it works its way closer. It's a partially cloudy day. Birds are singing cheerful songs in the background. In the distance, there is a waste management truck making stops to collect trash. Truck picks up cans by a winch, dumps cans into truck, and replaces cans on ground, then pulls off. We are standing on a hill looking downward onto the town as the truck does its route. As trucks fill, a trash compactor is used to condense the truck's trash. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Truck pulls up. The winch picks up the garbage can, slides up the truck, dumps the can in, slides the can back down and sits it on the ground. Now it drives off to the neighbor. Mr. Mr. Lee, Lee. Mobility, mobility game. game. A device, a device barely, barely functioning. functioning. Praying, Praying for, for a surprise, a surprise. Before, before he meets, he meets his, his demise. demise. The trash, the trash compactor. compactor. Mr. Leaf, a damaged cane, is lying on top of trash. Uh, I can't feel my cane tip. Uh, I can't feel my cord. Garbage truck collects trash nearby and starts trash compactor. What's that noise I hear? Uh, I hope it's not for me. Truck pulls up. We're next. Kane is grabbed by a hand and rescued from his plight. Scene changes to a press conference where the doctor is holding up an Ambutech cane repair kit as she talks to the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the technology to build a million dollar cane. Mr. Lee is that cane. We can rebuild him. We can make him better. We can make him cyborg and give him a new cord. We can give him a voice, letting users make a choice. We can give him his own personal style as he can be customized all the while. We can give him strength at any length. We can make him stiff and steady, always at the ready. We can make him stronger and last longer. We can make him look cooler and roll smoother. We can make him dependable, always commendable. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll take some questions. You over there. Scene changes to Dr. Sightless, who is going to operate on Mr. Leaf and restring him. 
I'm sitting at a table. I have the Ambutech repair kit in my hand. I'm taking the items out that I would need. So that would be the cord. And then I have a metal rod. It has a hook at the end of it, also known as a cord fisher. And then the reflective tape, I'm not going to touch that. And then here's some stationary ends. They don't move, so I'm not using that. I have my scalpel here, also known as a scissor. And then I have a container here with some reflective tape in all different colors that the canes come in. So I just keep them rolled up in there so they don't get any creases. And then I also have longer ones. And then I just cut different shapes out of them and ask a sighted person to put them on a cane for me or I'll have them cut it so they can use all usable space and I don't waste any. The tape is expensive. So I'm gonna sit that out the way because I'm not gonna use that. And if I need anything out of there, I'll just pull it out. So I'll just sit those to the side. Then I have my cane here, Mr. Leaf. He was inspired by Vermont. The cord is very weak. This cane is very old. It didn't come with the stopper at the end. So I took a piece of tubing to keep the cord from going inside the cane. It has maple leaves all over it. It's a white cane, 54 inches, four sections, Ambutech. And it had a rolling marshmallow tip, which got lost. Those things do happen. All right, and then we have a ball. This time he's going to get a high mileage rolling ball. So I'm going to stick that over there with the things I'm going to use. I am going to take my little package here of rubber bands and take the cane apart. What I usually do is put a rubber band for each link or each section or segment, whatever you want to call it. First section is the handle. The second section is the second section. Then you have the third. And then this is the last one where the ball goes. What I'm going to do is start with the handle is one. The second section is two, three, four is the last one. So I'm going to put four rubber bands on this section, three on the third section, two on the second section, and none on the handle. I'm going to lift up my cord and take my little tubing out that I cut. And I'm going to let the cord go inside the cane. And I'm going to pull off the last section. And I'm going to put my rubber band on it and give it four rubber bands. These are the little rubber bands that you can find in a hair section. And that's what the people put on the end of their hair to do their braids with beads and all kinds of decorative items. So I got one, two, three, four. Now I usually don't do this cause I just keep them in order. But since anyone may be new to restringing your cane, I do that to make it simple. And I don't want them together. So when I go to count them, I know which section. One, two, these two are gathered together. So I'll just split them apart. And there we go. Four rubber bands on the last section. And you can tell this is the end because it has a little ring around it. So you know that's the bottom of your cane. I don't like the canes with the red on it. People always try to tell me how I should like my cane. Your cane is your personal business. If you want to have it pink, blue, orange, green, striped, whatever, just remember your safety. But I don't let people tell me how to do my cane. I don't like the ones with the red. And I've been told by professional, that means you are blind and deaf. I'm not deaf. You can get into arguments over canes, just like you get into arguments over politics. That's another one. I'm just putting that out there. So this is my third section. I'm going to put three rubber bands on it. This section doesn't have any 
edges like this one. So if you have a five section cane, you can get them mixed up. I don't think it matters, but I do this anyway. Keep them in order. I usually line them up in order. But in this case, I'm putting rubber bands on it. So anybody can do it any way you want. Whatever makes you comfortable, that's what you go with. So I grab two rubber bands and put it on this section. And there we go. I'll stick these over here. And then I'll just close my rubber band bag and set it to the side. Now we have the cane with the cord sticking out, which is looped. And we're gonna see how this puppy is put together. I already gone ahead and took off the knots because it's knotted at the top of the cane. This cane is old. It does not have the new embellishments that they put on the top, which says Ambutech. And I had a hard time getting this handle off because it's put on there with adhesive. What I did was twist it counterclockwise. And it took me like four hours. If you have weak wrists, I would advise you not to bother. I just kept switching arms, keep twisting in the same way, counterclockwise, just like I'm doing now. And I put the handle back on thinking it would be simple and I have to twist it off again. This cane's been sitting around waiting to get redone. And there we go. I'm getting it off. And now the rubber handle's off. I'm just going to leave it there for now and see how this cord is. This is the handle one, which is maybe a foot. I didn't bring my measuring tape, but there we go. I'm looking at it to see how they did it because I'm not going to measure since canes come in different sizes. I am going to just take the new cord and measure it against what I have here. I am going to try to get the knot out. So I can get the measurement. Once you pull them tight, they are not fun to get out. I just work it with my nails. See, this is what I'm talking about. Not being a beauty queen because I just jump in. Roll up my sleeves and jump on in there. And it's coming out. Getting loose. And I'm paying attention to what type of knot they did here so I can make the same one. I am picking at my knots with my fingernails, trying to get it loose so I can untie it. So it looks like they made a typical knot and then tied it again. They made a regular knot, which you just take the two ends and tie it. And then with the two strings that were left over, they made another knot. Feels like it could be maybe three. So let me just keep working it. The ladies with the long nails, you may want to leave this for someone to get the knot out for you. I take the loose strand and push it back towards the knot to see if I can loosen it because it is hard. And some people will say, hey, why don't you just cut it? Because uh, first of all, I don't know how long this is because it's not measured. And they got several knots. So this is the easiest way is to just fit it to what's there. I got the first set of knots out and I have sore fingertips. That took about an hour to get all those knots out. So this is not a quick thing. And like I said, my fingertips are sore. This is what we have. We have the rubber handle, and then it comes out. So what they did is double it, stick it through the handle, and then it has a knot down here, which I'll have to work to get out. I'm going to put some embellishments on the top of my cane. And then it just runs through the cane, single, single cord, See, it took me a while, so the cord got all messed up. And then I'm going to put my stopper on it. And 
I got some beads here for embellishment. So let me get this last knot out and then we'll get started putting the string in. But it's quite simple. And you definitely need this cord fisher. I'm just going to loosen it, get this knot out so I can cut my new cord at the same length. This old cane, it's still in great condition. So I figure why throw it out? And if you have the time and you want to be adventurous and repair your own cane, you can just call Ambutech if it's an Ambutech cane. I don't know about the other canes, but you can just call them up, see how much it is, and I'll be back. Lots of fun, lots of fun. So got the knots out. It took me like four hours to get the second knots out. I had to call in the big guns, sighted people. You could just probably cut it. But I know from the instructions, it tells you to measure it to your cane length. And then they said they had a chart in here. Mine has pages missing. But these are the instructions that come with your repair kit. That should tell you all you need to know. I'm going to cut the cord to the length of the cane. Let's see what I do with it. It is not down there. It is over here. So I'm going to line it up with the cord that came out of the cane. And I'm telling you, they had some real fancy knots. I thought it was just very tight, but it had more knots. And you get done with those knots, and then there were more knots. Let me find where it starts for the new cord. Here we go. And it's a little tattered at the end. But what I am going to do is line it up with this beat up cord and then cut it. They say don't stretch the cord when you're cutting. So I'm just gonna hold it even and just line it up. So I'm pulling it out and I'm holding on to it so the old cord doesn't move away from the new cord, which is rolled up. And I'm not pulling it. I'm just holding it even with it as I try to unravel because I made a mess of it. And I keep going. I'm still going. Like I said, I didn't bring my measuring tape because all canes are a different length. And I would hate for someone to cut it short and they have a long cane and then they're mad at me because they cut it wrong and then they say, oh, but you told me to cut it. This way, in order to avoid any discrepancies, I'm not measuring anything. And I pinned my hair up because it was getting hot in here. I was getting frustrated. So here I am at the end. And I'm going to find my scalpel, which are scissors. And I'm going to line it up. <laughs> Let's see. In my view. Okay, I'm holding the cord. Yes, I got the new cord lined up with the old cord. Even if it's a little short, it should be okay. So I snipped it. So I'm gonna lay the two cords back on the table. They give you a lot of cord. I think you can do maybe three canes. Well, depending on the length, I'm gonna take that back. Depending on the length, you have enough cord here for at least two canes. So I got a nice sharp cord here. And then here's the tattered cord. Now let me show you something. It's one cord, it's not two cords going down the shaft. This is the end that had the handle. 
I take it, it's straight. I'm taking about maybe 14 inches and I am folding it onto itself. So I have a long little loop here. This is how it was shaped. So this part went into the handle. I'm just gonna make a quick little loose knot here where I take the cords, I wrap it around the cord, make a circle, pull it through to make my knot. You probably say, what the heck is she talking about? But anyway, I'm just doing this just quickly. This is the old cord. We're not restringing yet because we're going to follow instructions. But this is how it was basically shaped. I have a loose knot at the end of this double cord over here on my left hand side. And then I'm stretching it out on the right. And this is how it went through all the sections. Then it wrapped around and came back up. So now this is doubled and it has the little um, cord stopper at the end. And then when it met the handle up here again, it had all kinds of knots. That's why I did it this way. I took my time, unknotted it, and then the last end I needed help because there were just too many knots. After I got that, I wanted to bring it so I can show you that it's just one cord that runs through the cane and they just double it up and make a bunch of knots. Now I have the nice fresh cord, which is straight, feels great. The spinal cord for the cane. The first set of instructions said about a half inch, make a knot on each side. I have one end and I'm gonna make a knot in it. And I didn't cut the cord shorter like I thought I would do. I'm just making a knot. Now I'm on the other side of the cord and I'm making a knot. You take your cord, I have it straight. And now I'm bringing the cut end, which is in my left hand. I'm going to wrap it around. It's touching itself. I make it a circle. And then I am going to take the loose end or the cut end and I'm pulling it through the circle and it's making a knot. I hope you can understand that, those of you who are blind and have not made a knot. And then I'm just pulling it a little, just to make it a little tighter. So now I have a knot on both ends. Now I'm trying to make the loop for the handle. So I'm taking the handle, the cane part, it said make it an inch longer. Now I know it was longer than an inch. It was like two or three inches longer. I think that's about two to three inches. That's where it was. Well, that's what I did here. I took the handle part of the cane and I made a loop at the other end. So I got my cord in place from what I remember. And from doing this knot, I took the loop because I have it touching and I making sure it's straight and I took the loop and it was wrapped around so I have the two pieces up at the top it's looped it's not separated I have the short end on the right side of the cord and the long side on the left so I have the short end sticking out at the bottom of the loop and it's sitting next to the cord that continues that's going to go down into the cane. So I am going to take the loop end, I'm bringing it around in a loop, it's touching the cord and then I am going to pull it through the circle I made so I can make a knot. I'm trying to make sure it's even. And I'm not pulling the knots tight yet, but they do have to be pulled tight so they can fit inside the shaft of the cane. Because when this cord gets tight, it is tight. So I have my loop. This is the handle. This is the piece of cane that goes in the handle. 
from putting the cane tubing inside the loop I made for the cord. And yes, I have the two inches. This is what I have so far, a loop with a knot at the end, which I'm pulling tight so it doesn't come out because I need it to fit into the shaft. And then I'm going to take my cord fissure. I'm going to stick it down into the cane. I know this is the top because it's sticky. You don't need to take the rubber off of your cane handle. Just in case, I wanted to show you because some canes have ripped up handles. But I'm using rubber cement to put it back together. Now I'm taking the fisher and I'm taking the hook end and I'm sticking it down into the cane. See, it hit the table. Then I'm going to place the cord on the hook end because I know which way I want it to go on the cane. And I'm hooking the cord into the hook end. Get on there. Okay, there it is. And I'm going to pull the cord fissure from the other end to pull the cord through the cane, which I just did. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the handle. I have to stick the cane fissure through the hole in the top of the handle so I can grab the cord. Some people have their cane where it starts ripping down at the bottom, where it attaches to your cane shaft. And over time, it just tears and just goes right on up the handle. Now I stuck it in a hole and I brought the cord fissure through. And I'm going to grab the cord and pull it through the handle, the rubber handle. Then I am going to put the rubber back on the cane shaft and I'll glue it later. So here we go. I just push it up there and I'll just keep pulling. I'm going to grab this cord. I'm using the cord fisher to pull the cord through the cane shaft and rubber handle of the cane. There's a tiny hole at the top and I'm pulling until the cord appears at the top. And I just pull it through. There we go. Sometimes the cord fissure will bend in this process, but you can always get a new one as they are sold separately and are in every repair kit. We have that pull through. It gives me a little bit of a handle up top, which is what they wanted. And let me just finish making sure it's all the way down, which it is. These instructions here, they're telling you to look at figure one, two, or whatever, and it's cut off. I don't know what that's about. Handle is dry. I really wouldn't bother taking this off unless you're changing colors or it's ripped. If that happens to you and you want to repair it yourself, I used rubber cement. I also stuck the cord through and I put two brown beads as embellishment. These are faux wood. I assembled the handle and did everything. First, we cut the length of the cord that we took out of the old cane, and then we were to make knots at both ends, which I've done here, and I pulled it taut. So I have a knot at the beginning and a knot at the end. Then I had to feed the cord through the handle, pull it taut, make a knot, which I've done here. And I also added some embellishments, which are two faux wood balls to match my leaves, because these are maple leaves. 
So I upgraded my lovely leaf cane. Now I am going to connect the two cords. I have the spine running down the length of the cane, which will have the two pieces together. I make sure it's straight. And then I bring it up to meet with the other cut off piece that has the knot. So I'm going to tie it like this. So I have the two knots together and then about, I think it was an inch down, it was another knot. I'm going to try to stretch it and make a knot. See, my instructions are not good. I hope they updated them because it's telling you to look at this example, that example, and make the knot. I have a sighted person looking at it and the page is cut off. I'm just going to pull it. I'm trying to get it even. I need to have room to tie these things. If you make them too short, you can't tie it. So now I'm pulling that taut. The knot's getting smaller. It had a ton of knots in it. I'm going to just make another knot. So I loosened it and I'm tying another knot with the two of them. So now I have three knots. And when you're making your knots, you got to be careful that you don't make them too big where they don't fit into your cane shaft. You got to pull them tight for them to set. And if you make a mistake, they're hard to come out. You'd be there for four hours trying to get these puppies out. I like that I do this because I learned the anatomy of a cane. Yeah, got the knot now. And this way, if I have a problem, I can just fix it myself. The knots have to fit into the shaft of the cane. Let me see if it's going to fit in there. because yeah, it says pull it tight and my knot went up in there so let me just make it tighter so now I'm going to pull it up in there yes yes it went up <laughs> So I have the cane handle. It has the metal part on the bottom, which is to my right. We have the mechanical joint at the bottom because on the handle, the metal joint is at the bottom. So I am going to feed these sections or links or tubes, whatever you want to call them. I'm going to feed them with the joint to the right and the skinny part or the smaller end to the left. I have my fissure, which is the metal tool I've been using. And yes, you do need it. And they do come separately too. So I fed one on and I'm gonna feed another one. Let's see, where's number three? Nope, that's four. Okay, so this is number three. So I will put that on now. I'm feeding it with the smaller end to the left and the conical joint to the right. And then I'm feeding that through. And then the last one, which has the ledge or the little band around it because we know that is the part that the ball goes to the cane tip is last so i'm putting that on right now and there we go 
it fits it has enough tension it's not too loose because if it was loose i'd have to redo it okay so now i'm going to pull it out and i am going to put my stopper on because it says make a knot so what I am going to do is put my cane fisher there so it doesn't snap inside the cane. And then I'm just gonna check and make sure, yeah, it's sturdy. So I'm gonna set it upside down and start sliding the rubber bands to the top so I can take them off. Let me sit my little stopper right there. I'm going to take my finger, stick it in the cord, because I don't have the stopper on it yet, so I can get the rubber bands off, which I just did. Now let me stick my other finger in there so I don't lose it inside the cane. There. Now I'll take all my little rubber bands and set them in my pocket. I love pockets. Okay, oh, here's another one. Didn't get them all. Okay, let me okay, stick that in my pocket. And now I am going to take the stopper, a rectangle with a hole in the center. Doesn't tell you what side, they both feel the same. I'm going to take the cord, stretch it. Hold it with my hand, and I'm going to put the, the cord fissure through the cord. There we go. And then I'm going to take the stopper and feed it on the cord fissure. Boy, this got a lot of tension. That's a big improvement. I'm going to... Feed that on there, pull it through, there. Stick my finger through, because now I have to make a knot. And it says make a knot about one inch. So I'm gonna pull it out, and then I'm gonna make my knot. So I'm just twisting it around the cord, and then pulling it through, which I did. So there's my knot, and of course I'm going to have to squeeze it and make it smaller, but I have to put my new cane tip on it. Let me get it here. I'm doing the high mileage. It's a little heavier than the rolling marshmallow tip. I'm going to take the tip. This is a hook on style. I'm holding it up. Here's the ball. And at the top, it's like a rectangular feel. And there's a slit to the side of it. So in my case, the slit is on my left hand side. And it's closer to where the ball is. And that's where I'm going to slide the cord on. And it's going to hook the tip on. And there we go. I'm going to now pull it away from the cane and feed the stopper inside the cane by touching one end so it can go in there. And my, my knot's still a little big because it hasn't gotten stretched enough yet. So I just stick it in there and then it fits. Voila, it's on there. Now, Mr. Leaf has a high mileage ball to roll. And he's rolling. And he's back in business. He's ready to go. Okay, Mr. Leaf, you're good as a million bucks. Scene changes to a hospital floor where Mr. Leaf is gazing out from his hospital bed.
Scene changes to a gym. It's exercise day. Mr. Leaf is working out. Treadmill. Elliptical. Functional trainer. Scene changes. For a recap, you don't have to take the handle off. You can take it off if it's ripped. You can get these handles. You can order them. This is a grip. This is a black golf grip. It took me a while to get the knot to go up in the handle. So when you do your knots, you want to make sure they're in the handle. So when you fold your cane, you're not looking at the knot. You're just looking at the double cord. There we go. Now let's see. Yes, he does. And he's stiff and steady. And he's on the ready. Yep, that's how he's going. He's strong, I'm trying to bend him. He's very stiff. He's stronger to last longer. He's customizable because you can do whatever you want with your canes. If you want to leave it white, that's fine. Yes, I can feel the weight difference. The ball is a little heavier than the marshmallow. It's pretty simple. All you have to do is cut or measure cord. Normally, I would just cut it. I just happened to take out all the knots because I wanted to be able to know for myself what's in the cane. I have restrung the cane. The cane can fold. It's stiff. Woo! And I can take the cord to strap it. But I didn't really do that because I don't really fold my canes. But you can leave more room in your cord and stretch it. But mine's not going to stretch because I didn't allow for it. So that's what I like about customizing your cane. You can get it to suit your purpose. See, just... Mr. Leaf and I have been roaming the streets, checking out the town.